Hey everyone, and welcome to the deep dive. Mm. Today, we're diving into the world of Osterine, you know, also <laughs> known as MK2866. You've probably heard of it, especially if you're into fitness. Right. It's generating a lot of buzz, but also some controversy. And we've got yep. a stack of research and articles here. Yeah. And we break it all down for you. What exactly is Osterine? How does it work? What are the potential benefits? And importantly, what are the risks? And let's not forget the legal side of things. Oh, sure. By the way, if you are interested in more content like this, you can always visit our website at publichealthlaw.net. But for now, let's unpack Osterine. What exactly are we dealing with here? Well, you might be wondering what Osterine even is. It's a type of drug called a selective androgen receptor modulator, or SARM for short. Okay, a SARM. So is that like a steroid? It's similar, but with a key difference. Both SARMs, like Osterine and steroids, work by interacting with androgen receptors in your body. These receptors are like switches that can trigger muscle growth and bone strengthening. But traditional steroids are like a bull in a china shop. They activate androgen receptors all over the body, which can lead to a whole host of unwanted side effects. Ah, so that's where the selective part comes in with SARMs. Exactly. Osterine is designed to be more like a targeted missile. It primarily focuses on androgen receptors in muscle and bone tissues. Think of it this way. If steroids are a shotgun blast, Osterine is a sniper rifle. That's a pretty vivid analogy. So theoretically, you get the benefits of muscle growth and bone strengthening without the widespread side effects of traditional steroids. That's the idea. And what's even more interesting is that Osterine wasn't originally designed for bodybuilders trying to bulk up. It was actually developed for medical purposes. So like helping people who have lost muscle mass due to illness or aging? Exactly. Conditions like muscle wasting diseases, osteoporosis, and cachexia which is a severe wasting syndrome often seen in patients with cancer or chronic illnesses. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So how did this potential medical marvel end up in the gym bag of every fitness enthusiast? Well, as often happens, word got around, people started to realize that Osterine could potentially help build muscle mass and improve body composition. And it quickly gained popularity in the bodybuilding and fitness communities. That there's a catch, right? I mean, if Osterine was this miracle muscle builder, wouldn't doctors be prescribing it left and right? There's a big catch, and it's important to be crystal clear about this. Osterine is not approved by the FDA for human use. It's technically illegal to sell or distribute Osterine for human consumption in the U.S. So it's not a legal supplement you can just pick up at your local health food store? Not exactly. Despite its popularity and availability online, often through those less than reputable sources, it's technically operating in a legal gray area. And to make things even more complex, it's banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency, or WI. So if you're a competitive athlete, yeah. using Osterine is a huge risk. Absolutely. It would be considered doping and could lead to disqualification. So we've got this substance that's promising, but unregulated, potentially beneficial, but banned in competitive sports. It's definitely a head scratcher. But I think what's really fascinating is how Osterine actually works on a molecular level. It's pretty elegant, actually. Okay, I'm all ears. Mm -hmm. Break it down for us. How does Osterine work its magic? Well, remember how we talked about Osterine being a selective androgen receptor modulator? Yeah. It all comes down to how it interacts with those androgen receptors. So it's not just about flooding your body with androgen. Not at all. What's unique about Osterine is that it binds to androgen receptors, but it also dissociates relatively quickly. Think of it like this. It attaches, delivers its muscle building message, and then detaches. Moving on to the next receptor. Interesting. So it's a more controlled interaction compared to traditional steroids, which basically glom onto those receptors and don't let go. Exactly. And this is where the difference between Osterine and a substance like dihydrotestosterone or DHT becomes really important. DHT, which is a powerful androgen, tends to bind very strongly to receptors. And that's what's often linked to those unwanted side effects like hair loss and prostate problems. But Osterine's quick in and out approach helps it avoid triggering those negative effects. That's the theory. And this is where those terms you mentioned earlier, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics come into play. Okay, I admit those terms always make my head spin a little. Can you explain them in a way that even I can understand? Think of it like this. Pharmacokinetics is the journey of the drug through your body. It's about how it gets absorbed, where it travels, how it's broken down, and how it's eventually eliminated. Pharmacodynamics, on the other hand, is the story of what happens when the drug reaches its destination. In this case, those androgen receptors in your muscles and bones. Okay, that actually makes sense. So what's the journey and the story of Osterine? 
Well, you typically take Osterine orally. It gets absorbed into your bloodstream, travels throughout your body, and preferentially binds to androgen receptors in your muscles and bones. Your liver then metabolizes it, breaking it down into inactive compounds. And finally, it's eliminated from your body primarily through your urine. So it's a well-traveled molecule. Okay. But what about the story part? What happens when Osterine reaches those androgen receptors? That's where the muscle building magic happens, when Osterine binds to those receptors. It triggers a cascade of events that ultimately lead to increased protein synthesis, which is the process of building new muscle tissue. It can also stimulate bone formation and potentially help prevent muscle breakdown. So it's like a signal booster for muscle and bone growth. You could think of it that way. And it's this targeted action that makes Osterine so interesting, not just for bodybuilders, but also for researchers exploring its potential in treating various medical conditions. Right. You mentioned earlier that Osterine was initially developed to help people with muscle wasting diseases and osteoporosis. Are there any promising findings coming out of that research? There have been some encouraging studies, particularly in the area of muscle wasting diseases. For example, some clinical trials have shown that Osterine can help increase lean body mass and muscle strength in patients with cancer or those recovering from surgery. It's also shown promise in improving functional capacity in people with age-related muscle loss. So it's not just about aesthetics and getting ripped. There's real potential for Osterine to improve people's lives. Absolutely. And the research on its use in treating osteoporosis is also quite fascinating. Some studies suggest that Osterine can increase bone mineral density, which is crucial for preventing fractures, especially as we age. Okay, so we've got potential medical benefits, the allure of muscle growth, and a whole lot of hype surrounding Osterine. But we can't ignore the elephant in the room. The fact that it's not FDA approved and comes with potential risks, I think it's important to really dig into those risks, especially for anyone out there who might be considering using Osterine. You're absolutely right. While Osterine may seem appealing, it's crucial to understand the potential downsides. One concern is liver toxicity. Studies have shown that Osterine can cause elevations in liver enzymes, which can be a sign of liver damage. Yikes. That's definitely not something to take lightly. Are there any other potential risks we should be aware of? Another concern is the potential for Osterine to alter cholesterol levels. Some studies have shown that it can decrease good HDL cholesterol, which is important for heart health and perhaps the most significant risk, especially for those focused on muscle building, is testosterone suppression. Okay, testosterone suppression. That sounds serious. Can you explain what that means and why it's a concern? Essentially, Osterine can interfere with your body's natural production of testosterone. This can lead to a range of symptoms, like fatigue, low libido, mood swings, and even difficulty building muscle, which is ironic considering that's why many people use Osterine in the first place. So it's like a double-edged sword. You might gain some muscle initially, but then your body's own testosterone production takes a hit. Exactly. That's why many people who use Osterine opt for what's called post-cycle therapy, or PCT, after they finish using it. PCT. Can you remind us what that is and why it's important? PCT basically involves using medications or supplements to help restore your natural testosterone levels and get your hormones back on track. It's an attempt to minimize the long-term negative effects of testosterone suppression. Okay, so it's like hitting the reset button on your hormonal system. But even with PCT, there are still risks involved, right? Absolutely. There's no way to completely eliminate the risks associated with using a substance that's not FDA approved. Yeah. And that's why if you're even considering using Osterine, it's absolutely crucial to consult with a healthcare professional. That's a good point. It's not something you want to just experiment with on your own. So let's say someone has talked to their doctor, weighed the risks and benefits, and decided to use Osterine. Are there guidelines for how to use it safely or as safely as possible? Well, there are no official guidelines since it's not FDA approved, but generally people start with a low dose, typically around 10 to 20 milligrams per day, and gradually increase it if needed, while carefully monitoring for any side effects. And they usually cycle Osterine, meaning they take it for a specific period like six to eight weeks, followed by a break of equal or longer duration. So cycling is like giving your body a chance to recover and hopefully minimize the impact on your hormones. Exactly. It's a harm reduction strategy. And during those off cycles, some people might opt for PCT to help speed up the recovery process. But again, it's important to emphasize that even with these precautions, there are still risks involved. And it's crucial to work with a healthcare professional who can monitor your blood work and make sure everything is okay. Okay, so we've talked about the risks, the importance of medical supervision, and some harm reduction strategies. But let's shift gears a bit and address the legal and ethical side of things. We know Osterine is not FDA approved. 
and it's banned by WADA. But what are the real world implications of that? Well, legally speaking, possessing or selling Osterine for human consumption can lead to serious consequences. You could face fines, penalties, or even legal action, depending on the specific laws in your area. So it's not just a slap on the wrist. Definitely not. The legal landscape surrounding performance enhancing substances is complex, and the penalties can be quite severe. And ethically, the use of Osterine and SARMs in general raises a lot of questions particularly in the context of sports. You mean because it's giving athletes an unfair advantage? That's one argument. Proponents of banning Austrian argue that it violates the spirit of fair play and creates an uneven playing field. They also point out that the long-term health effects are still largely unknown. But what about those who argue in favor of Austrian? What's their rationale? Some people believe that as long as it's done responsibly and with medical supervision, athletes should have the freedom to choose how they want to enhance their performance. They might argue that Osterine could potentially be a safer alternative to traditional steroids, and that athletes are always looking for ways to push the boundaries of human performance. So it's a bit of a philosophical debate about the very nature of competition and what's considered fair play. Exactly. And it's a debate that's likely to continue as new performance-enhancing substances emerge. But I think it's important to have these conversations, to weigh the various perspectives, and to ultimately make informed decisions about what we're comfortable with. Right. We've covered the science, the risks, the legal stuff, and the ethical dilemmas. But now I'm curious about the actual experiences of people who have used Osterine. Mm -hmm. What are they saying? Are they seeing amazing results? Or are they regretting their decision? You're right. It's important to look at what people are actually experiencing. And if you spend any time on online forums or social media, you'll find a whole spectrum of anecdotal reports, both positive and negative. So some people swear by Osterine, while others warn against it. Exactly. Some people claim incredible muscle gains, fat loss, increased strength, and even improvements in mood and cognitive function. They might say it's a game changer and the best thing they've ever tried. But I bet there's another side to that story, right? There is. On the other side, you'll find reports of people experiencing severe side effects, like liver problems, hormonal imbalances, hair loss, mood swings, and even depression. They might say that Austrian ruined their health and they wish they had never touched it. It's a stark reminder that there's no such thing as a risk-free performance enhancer. And it's so important to remember that individual responses can vary widely. What works for a one person might not work for another and could even be harmful. Absolutely. And that's why it's so crucial to approach Austrian or any performance enhancing substance with a healthy dose of skepticism. Don't just believe everything you read online. Do your research. Talk to your doctor and make an informed decision based on your individual circumstances and goals. That's great advice. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground here. We've talked about the science behind Osterine, the potential benefits and risks, the legal and ethical considerations, and even the user experiences. It's clear that Osterine is a complex substance with a lot of nuances. It definitely is. And as with anything that has the potential to impact your health and well-being, it's important to approach it with caution, knowledge, and a healthy dose of critical thinking. Well, this has been an incredibly informative deep dive into the world of Osterine. It feels like we've covered every angle. We've certainly tried our best to provide you with a comprehensive and balanced perspective. And before we wrap up this part of our deep dive, we want to remind you that we have one more segment coming up where we'll summarize the key takeaways and leave you with some final thoughts to ponder. And as a reminder for more in-depth information and resources on topics like this, you can visit us at publichealthlaw.net. Stay tuned for the final part of our deep dive. Welcome back to the deep dive. We've taken quite a journey through the complex world of Austrian. Yeah, we have. The science, the potential benefits, the risks, the legal and ethical considerations, and even the personal experiences of those who've used it. It's been a deep dive indeed, but as with any deep dive, it's helpful to come back to the surface and recap what we've learned. Right. What are the key takeaways here, especially for you, our listener? Right, let's distill all this information into something actionable. So if you're out there thinking about Osterine, here's what you need to know. First and foremost, Osterine is a type of drug called a SARM, which stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator. It's designed to target androgen receptors in your muscles and bones, potentially leading to increased muscle growth strength and bone density. And it's this targeted action that makes Osterine different from traditional steroids, which can have more widespread effects throughout the body often leading to unwanted side effects. Exactly. And while Osterine was initially developed for medical purposes, 
such as treating muscle wasting diseases and osteoporosis, it's gained significant popularity in the fitness world as a potential performance enhancer. But here's the crucial point. Osterine is not FDA approved for human use. That means it's technically illegal to sell or distribute it for human consumption. And it's banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency. So if you're thinking about using Osterine, you need to be aware of the legal risks and potential health consequences. And those risks are real. We talked about liver toxicity changes in cholesterol levels, and perhaps most importantly, testosterone suppression. These are serious side effects that can have a significant impact on your health and well-being. That's why it's so crucial to consult with a healthcare professional. Before even considering using Osterine, they can help you weigh the potential benefits and risks, monitor your health, and guide you on how to use it as safely as possible should you decide to proceed. And remember, even with medical supervision, there's no way to completely eliminate the risks associated with using a substance that's not FDA approved. We also discussed the importance of cycling Osterine, meaning using it for a specific period, typically six to eight weeks followed by a break of equal or longer duration. This can help minimize the impact on your hormones and give your body a chance to recover. And some people opt for post-cycle therapy, or PCT, after they finish using Osterine to help restore their natural hormone levels. But even with these precautions, the decision to use Osterine is a personal one. That should be made with careful consideration and a full understanding of the potential consequences. We also touched upon the ethical considerations surrounding Osterine especially its use in sports, there are valid arguments on both sides of the debate, and it ultimately comes down to your own personal values and beliefs. And finally, remember those anecdotal reports you find online. Take them with a grain of salt. What works for one person might not work for another, and what seems like a miracle cure for some could be a nightmare for others. Individual responses can vary widely, and there's no guarantee of safety or effectiveness, so do your research be skeptical and make an informed decision. Based on evidence, not just hype, we hope this deep dive into the world of Osterine has given you the knowledge and insights you need to navigate this complex and often confusing landscape. Remember, your health is your most valuable asset. Take care of it. Make informed choices. And as always, keep asking questions and keep learning. If you're interested in learning more about topics like this, make sure to visit our website at publichealthlaw.net. Until next time.